We were living in Pittsburgh and I was looking for uh, a new job. As part of the interview, I was staying out in the Lake Geneva area. Even when I was uh, interviewing, they flew my family. And uh, as we were, you know, in um, a hotel room on Sunday morning, I decided to try to find a church just to see what was going on. And uh, I just went on the online on the internet, found Lakeland that seemed to be, I don't know, the best fit just from, you know, you know viewing online and I decided to come. I thought oh, I could be a great church if we ever decide to come here. We have two girls, so our eldest is a senior now. And um, so Lake Geneva was, um, the draw for us was the schools. They come on Wednesday nights and they're really enjoying it. I think one of the uh, elements that was hard during the transition was just the fact that uh, we had moved the kids probably four times since my oldest was born. And uh, I just want my kids to feel like they're at home, that they can make this, this area, this place, this school system, this church, uh, uh, a home. So got into the habit of uh, filling out the prayer cards for various things. And so I wrote, hey, you know, my wife needs a job um, teaching. I think maybe seven, maybe 10 days later, I get a call from uh, someone at the church and describing um, an opening at a local Christian school. And, and uh, so I connected that person to uh, Suzette and she ended up interviewing and getting that job, and that was kind of like unexpected. We definitely didn't expect the Lord to act that fast, but that was definitely a, a blessing for us. Lakeland was very open to us. When um, we first arrived, I felt like God was telling me, Suzette, just concentrate on your new job and concentrate on your home. So I felt like I had to hold myself back and I found a lot of people really encouraged me, no, Suzette, you're doing the right thing, you know, just invest in your children. And so um, I waited um, until this year to really get involved in giving, my, giving of my own time. And now I find that I'm, you know, helping out with CR as a leader. And I'm just really grateful to the, the people who surrounded me and really encouraged me that it's okay to take a rest. But what excites me about the MOVE initiative is the increase um, in outreach towards the kids of this region. I'm about to send my kid to, to college and I look at these colleges and I hear about, you know, what they're kind of walking into. Um, college is a, it's a great place to get an education and it's also a great place to lose your faith statistically. Um, I just think that uh, that has to be a major concern and, and outreach uh, of the church. What excites me about MOVE is incorporating more um, of digital media. I'm excited that the church is looking into ways that we can um, you know, really attract more people to church. It's building relationship, and that church is really a home where you can build relationship with Christ and with His people. I just think the way people are tuned into the media, that will be the first way that they'll um, see a church. Like I went online, you know, I didn't, no one gave me, there was no word of mouth for me to find Lakeland. It was a presence on, on the internet. Because the Bible mentions so many times on how rich we are, how blessed we are, and uh, how he'll pour out a blessing, and how he has given his son and how he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. I know there's hard times. Um, there's, there's times when I, it's a habit, but when I write the check, um, I feel it. Um, and, and, uh, but sometimes just, you know, thinking back to God's great generosity, it, it really dwarfs what, we, what he asks of us. When you put God first, even though, you know, the bills and, and all these other things are, you know, in your mind that you really need to do. When you put God first, He comes through. We've had ups and downs um, financially, even through our the seasons of tithing. And, uh, you know, He always, God always shows up. He always brings what we need, sometimes just what we need and sometimes, and many times overflowing. So I can look back as, a, as someone who's kind of done this uh, 
as a discipline, I can just look back at those times as, yep, you know what, We've, I've seen this before. God shows up, right? God makes the difference. Hey, small groups, welcome to week two of MOVE. This week we dive into moving a culture and uh, that's all about expanding our digital footprint. So here I am sitting in our foyer space at our live online table where our uh, those who serve for our online community are usually sitting here week to week and they're chatting with people online. So if you're watching online, this is where those folks are hanging out. And um, I'm just excited to, to talk a little bit about this opportunity even for us to continue to press into uh, the digital space. But I launched into MOVE with really a simple question for all of us to consider. I think we're heading into an amazing season in Lakeland's life, where I think for almost all of us, we're gonna be able to say a really sweet kind of statement of I was there when, but I threw out a question this past week um, about, or on week one, about just the whole idea of being at MOVE as we launched into this. And my opening question was simply this, are you gonna have a story to tell in regards to how God moved in your life during MOVE? You know, it's one thing to just say, I was there when, it's another thing to say, here's what God did in my life during that season, during that whole time when the whole church was praying about what does this look like for us individually to make a move, to partner with the MOVE initiative. And um, maybe even in your small groups, you'll just consider this question. Do you think you're going to? Maybe some of you are like, man, we're on the fence of whether or not we're going to kind of step in, like that we'll have a story to tell. Maybe some of you are already going, yeah, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, our family's going to have a story to tell. What um, gives you that kind of in, that inkling or that, that thought process? What have you already started to do or what conversations are you already having that um, will help you know or that you are aware we're going to be doing something and it's going to have an impact and we're excited to see how God is going to work in our family. I just think it could be encouraging to share with your group about how some of you are already starting to process um, some of that together. But this week we're talking about moving a culture and that's expanding our digital footprint. I just thought honestly it might just be fun to tell some stories. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to tell some stories, read a verse to you, and then uh, set you guys up for a conversation. I remember about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, I met a guy, came to our church, and I said, hey, tell me a little bit about your spiritual journey and how you came to know the Lord. Um, and he said, well, it actually didn't begin until later in life. My kids actually were the critical element that helped me find my way to God. Um, they had gone off to college, and while at college, some friends invited them to a church. There at church, uh, they discovered the truth about Jesus Christ. They gave their lives to Christ and they called home and they said, Mom and Dad, you've got to watch online. Our church does this thing called Church Online. And so he and his wife started watching Church Online and not too long after uh, they had been watching, they came to realize, man, they didn't ever really know what it meant to have a relationship with God. And so they trusted God as their Lord and Savior, and uh, Jesus as their Savior. And they started watching every single week. The, the unique thing is this church, though, was down in North Carolina. And so they were watching every week. His wife happened to be a, um, a, a flight attendant for an airline, and so they could often actually hop planes and go on down and check out this church and hang out with their kids. Well, after years of doing this, um, it was one of these deals. He got invited here to Lakeland. And when he came here, he said, this is mind blowing because he lives right in, in Delavan. He said that there's a church just like my kids church in, in North Carolina. And actually, he referred to it as his church um, down in North Carolina, but it's right here in town. And now I don't have to fly to go to church every weekend. And I just kind of giggled and laughed at the whole concept. But in all truth, that was his church. 
His church was a church in another state in which he uh, played a critical part in leading him to the Lord. He and his wife flew down there to get baptized. That was his church. And um, the whole idea of a church being your home church in another state is really not becoming too foreign of a concept any longer. In fact, almost every week I, I hear people who they come on up to me and they say, hey, I just want you to know this week I've got so-and-so watching from this location. My, I've got my my brother, my sister, my child, my good friend, they're watching from this state, they're watching from this country, they're watching from over here. I've been inviting them forever to join us online and they're finally online this week. Don't blow it, you know, statements like that. And, um, but I laugh, but I really think what a sweet opportunity of a time period that we live in that we can use the internet to take the gospel and take what God is doing right here at Lakeland um, way beyond our borders. I had a, a guy not too long ago, I was walking up uh, onto the stage um, at the beginning of the 9 a.m. service and this guy grabbed me by the arm and he said, hey, I just wanna let you know, my daughter who's in the military, uh, she's got her whole barracks watching this morning online. And once again, just as I'm getting ready to go on up and preach, all of a sudden it changes the whole perspective of going, wow, the opportunity of maybe uh, people who are sitting there and have never heard the gospel before are being exposed to it for the very first time. Maybe this is their first exposure ever to church. Maybe they've never been before. And so the opportunity is just huge. Every week I meet people who um, they'll say for the very, they'll, they'll say the first time that they are here, they'll say, this is our first time here, but I've been watching for weeks. Um, not too long ago, we had a lunch with the staff and it was interesting because as we were meeting people who were at this lunch with the staff, multiple people said, this is our first time in the building. We've been watching online uh, for a while now and we heard you talk about lunch with the staff, so we figured we ought to come to this church and discover the church that we already call our home church. And this is really what we're discovering is that the new front door is no longer the front door of your church. The new front door is the online community. It's what people are doing to engage with your church online, watching online, uh, even having community online. And uh, as we think about just this opportunity, I think it's an opportunity that we should not miss. We dove into really one passage of scripture this weekend, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and it's where Paul is talking about everything that he will do to reach people for the gospel, to win people to Christ. He says this, though I'm free and I belong to no one, I've made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel. And I love it. I'll, I do, I'll become all things to all people so that all, by all possible means. And I think we would all agree that the internet um, would fall into that category of by all possible means. What could we utilize? What could we do uh, to utilize the, the digital space to reach people for Christ? And if the digital space is becoming one of the greatest influencers in culture, um, I think we would all agree we need to use that means to reach people for Christ. Interesting statistic, they say that within two years, 80% of the world will be 4G. That means what we uh, use right now as far as internet connectivity on our cell phones and our smartphones, that is going to be all over the world where uh, people are literally coming out of mud huts without electricity, but they'll have a smartphone and they will have internet uh, and they'll be charging their phones through, uh, through, through solar power and things like that. And the gospel will be able to go there. And so the, the opportunity is once again huge. Our means of the internet to take the gospel everywhere is pretty mind-blowing. I'm excited about the opportunities for the future. And so in, in your small groups, just think about how the, uh, the digital space, how the internet has influenced you, either for the positive or for the negative. Uh, consider this question. Have you ever uh, kind of gone on the internet for a period of time, maybe you're surfing or you're on social media and you walked away encouraged or discouraged? Um, just think about that. Uh, what was it that led you to feel encouraged? What was it that led you to feel discouraged? How is it that the digital space actually can, um, can cause both of those things within us? How could the digital space be used to move the gospel forward? Uh, here's another question I really want you to consider is, have you ever considered how you can use social media as an evangelism tool? 
that maybe you're sitting there going, I don't like social media and I don't want to stay, I want to stay off it for the most part. But have you thought about how you could use it as an evangelism tool to plant seeds of the gospel in your friends' lives? Maybe it's friends from years ago um, or friends uh, in your neighborhood that you've recently gotten to know that it's through that platform, you might be able to start just sharing a verse, sharing a word of encouragement, sharing, hey, our church is going online right now. Um, but what steps could you take to use what you have at your fingertips, which is the internet, for kingdom impact? I think a lot of us haven't really thought through that lens of what could I do to utilize what I have uh, for God's kingdom? And so enjoy your conversations, and we will see you guys next week.